Hey everybody, Robin from Backscatter here. Jim from Backscatter here. And Jim, you've brought a pretty crazy looking rig into the studio today. What is this thing? So this is the Nauticam EMWL lens, which stands for Extended Macro Wide Lens. Hmm. And this is not your everyday lens. How do you use something like this? So this is for close up macro wide angle type work. So where you're getting macro subjects right to the very tip of the lens element and you get the perspective distortion so you can see the macro element plus also the environment that it lives in in a wide angle shot. Well, it looks like it makes some pretty amazing photos and it looks like a really cool piece of gear. So what do you say we break this thing down and figure out everything underwater photographers need to know? Sounds good. Jim, you mentioned perspective distortion. Help break that down for us. What does that really mean in photographic terms? So perspective distortion is a phenomenon that happens with wide angle lenses where a foreground subject very close to the lens will look and appear to be much larger than things that are further away from the lens. So for example, if I had a eight millimeter fisheye lens and you were to put your hand out in front of the fisheye lens and put it really, really close to fisheye lens, meaning like an inch away, your hand would appear to be much, much larger than your head, which we know is not true, but that's what perspective distortion is. And so we use that for underwater to create this environment where a macro critter could look really large in the frame compared to other things in its surroundings. So why can't you just do cool perspective distortion with a conventional fisheye setup? Well, you can do perspective distortion with a fisheye setup only to a certain extent, mm -hmm. because you need to get the subject extremely close to the lens. And when you have a fisheye lens behind a dome port, you physically cannot break the barrier of the dome port, so it's not going to allow you to get close enough. This being an underwater wet optic, you can literally touch whatever you want to shoot and the lens will still focus and give that extreme perspective distortion. So basically it fits where a large dome can't. So think of like cracks, crevices, even the inside of a bottle. I put this thing inside of the bottle with the octopus and got a unique shot that you could never get before. So is that kind of the only way you would use this lens? Actually, the funny thing is you could use it as a regular wide angle lens too. Okay. You don't have to be super close to everything. So I took a picture of a turtle, looks like a regular wide angle shot, but the nice thing about it was I was a lot further away from the turtle than I would be if I had a dome. So it gave the critter a little bit more living distance for it. And so it didn't like freak out on me and take off. That is an advantage of using this kind of a setup. So Jim, you've already told us that this is a wet mount lens. We know what's going on to an existing camera system, but where's the separation between the rig we've already got and the EMWL we wanna add onto it? And what exactly are the parts of that EMWL? Cool, so first off, this is a Sony A1 Nauticam housing with 90 millimeter macro lens. The EMWL is designed to be used as a wet lens with macro lenses. Okay. So the next part is the optics of the EMWL. There's three different parts. First one is the focusing unit. That is going to be mated specifically to your macro setup, what you're shooting, whether it be a Sony 90, a Nikon 105, Canon 100. They have four different focusing units for all sorts of different rig setups, including Fuji, Olympus, Panasonic. So one of these focusing units will be dependent upon what camera and lens you're shooting. If you have any questions on that, just give us a call, Backscatter, we can set you up on that. Number two is the relay lens in here. So the relay lens is kind of optional actually, um, because when you use the front end objective lens along with the focusing unit without the relay, everything looks inverted, flipped upside down and left right. So when you're in the viewfinder, you move left, things go right, up is down, so very confusing to use. So me personally, I'm always going to use the relay lens with it so I have the correct orientation. Plus the other, I think, benefit to that is it puts you further away from the critter and so that you're not so close to it. You get more working distance. Third thing is the objective element on the front. That is the optics that's going to give you your field of view, your angle of coverage. There's four different ones. There's uh, 60 degrees, 100 degrees, 130 degrees, and 160 degrees angle of coverage. So how are we actually connecting the EMWL to the housing? What are our mounting options? So a couple different ways you can do it. The way we have it set up here 
is with this optional flip mechanism. What this allows you to do is flip this out of the way so that you can use it as a regular macro lens. You have this extra flip here. If you want to put on a macro diopter, do regular macro work, then you can flip that out of the way and then flip this in, do your wide angle macro shots. What other options do we got? Other option is a, a simple bayonet mount. You put the bayonet mount on the front of your port and then this will bayonet on and off. What do you think between the two? What's your take? So I've only shot it with the bayonet mount, but for me it was, uh, I didn't get as much time on lens as I really wanted to. So mm -hmm. I think on my next trip, I'm going to use this unit where I can do macro and wide angle macro at the same time on the same dive without having to hand something over to a dive guide or something like that. My concern is that this is, rig is pretty heavy to begin with. This is another element that goes on there, but you just add more flotation and you'll be okay. So we've got an optional part added on here to the end where we could throw a couple extra ball mounts and a shoe mount on there. Tell me about that. How'd you use that? So this here is for mounting some lights or strobe on the front. Uh, it gives you the option to do that. I didn't do that personally myself. I used the arms here and just got the backscatter mini flashes up super tight to the optic. Uh, we'll talk about shooting technique a little bit later. Um, but for video, it's really cool. You can take this and put, turn it upside down and put an arm in between those two balls and it kind of acts as like a bipod so that you have more stability when you're doing video. Especially up there on the nose where all this extra weight is. It exactly, it is a, tricky. it is a bit nose heavy, yeah. So Jim, some of the different objective units have lens hoods on those. Did you shoot with those at all? No, I didn't. Hmm. I didn't shoot with the lens hood because the lens hood would put me too far away from the critter I was shooting for those extreme close-up perspective distortion shots I was going after okay. as a photographer. Yeah. I think if you're doing video or if you're a little bit further away doing a regular wide angle shot, certainly you can have those on there. But it, it was just interfering with the type of shooting that I was doing. That being said, you gotta be super careful around hard corals because <laughs> one little dink into a hard coral will spell the end of your objective lens optic. <laughs> so maybe leave that lens hood off at your own risk. <laughs> hey everybody, hope you're enjoying this video. You know, you can join our family by buying your underwater photo and video gear from us here at Backscatter. Every purchase includes free lifetime tech support, will beat any price, hands down, and we ship worldwide daily. Our in-house authorized warranty service center has you covered for any maintenance and repairs. Here at Backscatter, we dive, shoot, and service everything we sell. Whether you're point and shoot or professional, we look forward to helping you meet your underwater imaging goals. Now back to the video. So one of the last lenses of this style that we shot was the Laowa Venus 24 millimeter probe lens. How does the EMWL compare to that? What was your experience like shooting both of those? Yeah, they're quite different from each other. Okay. The Laowa lens is a dry mount lens, meaning it mounts directly to the camera and then there's a port that seals against the side of the tube of the lens. Mm -hmm. The EMWL is completely self-contained for underwater use. It's a wet lens. You can put it on and off underwater if you want to. There's an advantage to that because you have choices. You wanna do regular macro, you wanna do wide angle macro, you can make that decision in the water. But the Venus lens, you're stuck that way. Okay, how about other restrictions with that? I remember that lens has, what, a manual aperture? Yeah, it's manual focus and manual aperture. So it was extremely difficult to shoot. Uh, tracking, moving subjects, you're racking focus the whole time, watching it. So it was, uh, difficulty level was quite high. This is just taking advantage of the camera's autofocus and aperture and, I mean, every other control built into the camera because it's not built into the lens. That's correct. The major advantage here is the ability to do autofocus through this lens and have it track. A1, track things really nicely underwater, th even through the EMWL lens. And then the obvious thing seems the interchangeable objectives, being able to change your field of view instead of being locked into just one, right? That's right. So the Laowa is 24 millimeters only. Whereas with the EMWL, you have choice of the four different objectives that you can change underwater at will. And so you actually have a couple of shots you set up to really do a good side-by-side -side comparison of these. Tell us about this. Yeah, so in 2019, I shot the Laowa lens in Lembe. I had a snake eel shot with a diver in it. And the diver really struggled to get into the frame as much as he did because it's not terribly wide at 24 millimeter equivalent, which is about 80 some degrees. Flat port's gonna reduce it a little bit more. 
So it's pretty narrow for underwater work. Whereas with the MWL, I shot it with the 160 degree optic. Just as a comparison, you can see how much more of a background you can have with a 160 degree optic compared to the lower lens. So what is this thing actually like to shoot in the water? What's the practical use of this as a wet lens like? Well, it's pretty fun to begin with. <laughs> All right. You know, that was, I like that, that answer. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> um, but the, some things you need to keep in mind with it. Number one is the buoyancy of it. It okay. is quite a bit of glass hanging out over the front. Yeah. So I used every little bit of flotation that I could. Okay. Um, you can see some footage of me underwater using this thing. It's I, I took every float that I had and put it on this thing, <laughs> including having one hooked into the, the shoe of the 90 port to give it a little bit more flotation off the front. So the other thing that you have to be aware of when you're shooting this underwater is this is a wet lens. With a wet lens, just like any other wet lens underwater, it needs to be burped. So obviously, yes, where it mounts up to the macro port here, it needs to be burped, but you also have two other sections that need to be burped as well. Mm. That's in between the objective and the relay and the relay and the focusing unit. With that, there's these uh, little switches here that open a port so that you can um, let water in, kind of flick them back and forth and get, some, uh, get the bubbles out. Um, that works most of the time, but sometimes you still might need to take apart the elements individually and wipe them clean and put it back together. Once you put it back together and you close these ports off, they stay clean pretty much. It's just that in macro muck environments, like I was in Lembe, there's a lot of silt and sand. So it's easier for it to get in between the focusing unit and the macro port. So you might have to clean that more than once on a dive. You'll see these uh, pieces of sand in the viewfinder, they'll be shown as like black dots or something. Okay. So just make sure you have a really clean lens set up, check it before you start shooting, and always have that as a little note on your slate to do. So again, on a practical level, how do the four different objective ends work? Are you really bringing all four of these on every dive and switching them out when you want, or what's up? Yeah, I didn't because I've shot the 130 degree optic before and I want something wider. Yeah, okay. So I was really jazzed about the 160 degree optic, so that's all I shot on this past trip. Cool. Now, as a videographer, mm -hmm. I could see that this would be a really good thing to have different objectives in there because you can have up to five different looks for the same scene. So mm. if you're telling your story, you would have like a super wide shot, wide shot, tighter shot, even tighter shot, maybe even a macro shot. You can do all that with this NWL setup. So I think the other optics will be uh, very, very useful for a video shooter, maybe more useful than, than a photographer. I think a photographer, for the most part, you're probably gonna wanna be with the 130 or the 160 optic, in my opinion. So Jim, you got some pretty awesome photos out of this rig. Give me a little explanation on what went into making these shots. Yeah, so let me do an example. I have this shot here of this octopus in a beer bottle. Now this beer bottle, it's like a one liter beer bottle and the back end of it was hacked off. Um, so it's a fairly large octopus in here. So when I got in pretty tight to this, I'm 10 millimeters away or something like that, a little backed off just to fit it in the frame. So what I did was like, I just wanted to fill the frame with it, but also have a diver in the background. Now, as far as some of the settings are concerned, aperture needs to be really high. We're talking 16, 22 or higher if you have that available on your particular rig, just to get the depth of field, because the depth of field is macro-like with this. It's fractions of what you would have in a typical wide angle shot. Then with the shutter speed, typically with macro, you're kind of making everything dark, so you limit the ambient light. Well, this kind of shooting, you want to have ambient light in there so you can see what the background is. So you're gonna slow that down uh, a bit, but that might still not be enough. You might need to increase the ISO compared to what you're normally used to shooting with macro just to get more of the background light into, into the frame. So as far as the strobe light, I used one mini flash and that was straight overhead and a little bit to the right, placed right up against the 160 optic. I didn't use a snoot. The snoot would have been too narrow for this kind of subject, so I had the mini flash really close to the point where I was only lighting the bottle and the octopus. I didn't want to light any of the rest of the sand or the background or anything like that because it would just draw attention away from the octopus. Mm -hmm. Good call. Yeah, so then we'll compare that shot to this other shot with the goby in a bottle. Now, this is another kind of similar shot, but 
I'm shooting the front end of the bottle where you have a narrow opening and a much smaller subject. So I have to get even closer. I'm practically touching the front end of this bottle with the 160 degree optic. I did use a snoot for this one because I only wanted to light the front end of the bottle and nothing else. And the difficult part of this was having to get so much closer and still maintain some focus on it um, and stability in getting it lined up because just micro moves of the camera would put it in and out of frame in and out of focus. So actually what I did was I used a tripod to get everything set up super close because this is a stationary object that's not going to move. So I did that and I actually did manual focus on this one just to make sure I got the eye and mouth just perfectly in focus. And you can even see the goby starts to fade off with the depth of field and starts to blur out towards the tail end of the goby. Give you an idea how little depth of field you have with this particular setup. Same thing, I need to slow the shutter speed down a little bit and also wind up using a um, higher ISO to get the background light into it so I have the model in the background. That's how I pull off these two different shots, but certainly the Gobi shot was much, much more difficult because I had to get even closer. This lens does not get the perspective distortion without being super, super close. Otherwise, it just looks like a regular wide angle shot. So it sounds like a pretty interesting challenge. Would you say it leaned more towards the fun side of things or the frustrating side of things? Definitely towards the more fun side of things, but you need to work it for sure. So how about after the dive and actually importing the card? What kind of things did you learn once you got them on the computer? Yeah, so one of the things that I learned on the computer is like the depth of field is not what you think it is in camera. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so okay. A number one is to like, you really gotta nail that. If I mm. had to tell anybody um, the difficulty shooting this lens is make sure your focus is really, really set. The second thing I noticed is that the images were coming in with kind of like a yellow kind of tinge to the mm. white balance on them. Okay. Um, I don't think this is because of the optic itself. I think there's something funky with the way the camera sees this 90 lens going through this wide angle scene. There's something with that because with the Lawa lens, I also noticed the same kind of thing, like a yellowy kind of tinge to it, hmm. but easily fixable in post. You shoot raw, you take your eyedropper for your white balance, you put on neutral thing in the frame, boom, it's done. Your picture looks great. So we also spent some time shooting video on this. What did you notice about the difference between the video experience and the photo experience? So with video, where I think you get the uh, the advantage is in the storytelling side of things. Because a lot of popular video sequences are a wide, medium, tight kind of setup. Mm -hmm. And so with the different objectives, you could use those to do a wide, medium, tight. And you can even do super, super tight without the EMWL and just the macro lens, and you go to super wide as well. So I think it gives you those different opportunities. The other thing is, it's not all about the perspective distortion with the video side of things. I think you could have something in the frame where it's maybe not having other things in the background. It just gives a different look to it, and you can be backed further off a little bit, so you don't have as a critical small depth of field as you do with the perspective distortion where you're right up on top of something. Probably a little bit more options for video, especially using the narrower optics, I yeah, think. Yeah. But for photo, I would stick with the 130 or the 160 optic, in my opinion. There's also like the motion element of video and thinking about using the probe lens as just that to maybe you know push in and show a subject in its environment or where it lives or doing something that's, again, kind of unique and that you can't pull off with a traditional macro or wide angle port setup. So how'd you do video lighting? What'd you use for that? So video lighting, backscatter macro wide 4300. The primary reason behind that is because you can do a, a narrow beam with it on the, on the macro beam. So very nice tight beam. So you don't light up everything else in this, in the water, like all the sand and everything else. And if you get, need to get even tighter, you can throw the snoot on it and do that as well. Jim, thanks a lot for your perspective on this lens and uh, thanks to the EMWL lens itself for giving us such a unique perspective to talk about in underwater photography. Yeah, it was a ton of fun to shoot and I'm looking forward to shooting again on my next trip. I'm sure it's gonna be awesome. If there's anything else you wanna learn about the EMWL, you can give us a call here at Backscatter. You can check out our website. We've got a bunch more really cool content to explore and we'll leave a bunch of that linked in the video description too. 
And remember, you can help us keep making more of these videos by supporting Backscatter by getting your underwater photo and video gear from us. Every purchase from Backscatter includes free lifetime tech support, we ship internationally every day, and we dive, shoot, and service everything we sell. I'm Robin from Backscatter, signing off. I'm Jim from Backscatter, signing off. And we'll see you on the next one.